Then they tell them, well, DNA proves evolution. Every, just about every debate I do, they'll say, DNA proves evolution. Oh, let's talk about this. This textbook says we have evidence from molecular biology, talking about the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. This book says Darwin speculate, speculated that all forms of life are related. This speculation has been verified because of DNA sequences. This is a lie. There's nothing about DNA that has helped verify evolution. The DNA is the most complicated molecule in the universe. One DNA strand is about six or seven feet long. Average person in this room has 50 trillion cells in their body. Each of those contains 46 DNA strands, except for the gametes, they got 23. If you took all the DNA out of your body, it would fill about two tablespoons. But if you unwound it and stretched it out, this really complex, tight molecule would stretch out and you could tie them all together and one person's DNA would stretch from Earth to the moon and back five million round trips out of two tablespoons. It's got the most complicated code ever in the history of the world. If you typed out the code found in your DNA, when you got done typing, you'd have enough books to fill Grand Canyon 40 times. Does anybody work with computers at all? Let me see you get 40 Grand Canyons full of books, condense it to software, CD-ROM, PK-ZIP, I don't care what you use, PsyQuest. When you're all done, though, it has to fit into two tablespoons. <laughs> My Heavenly Father did it. He's pretty smart, ain't he? David said, I will praise thee, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't even have a microscope, and he could figure it out. You know, from conception to birth, the baby adds 15,000 cells per minute to its body, each one more complex than a space shuttle. How would you like to be in charge of supplying materials for a factory that's producing 15,000 space shuttles a minute? Some of you ladies are thinking, I did, man, that's hard. Sometimes in the middle of the night, they want pickles down there for something. What do you want a pickle for? I don't know, but go get one. Must be building something that needs part of a pickle. Who knows, you know? You know, the probability of one DNA arranging itself by chance has been calculated to be 1 in 10 to the 119,000th power. That's a big number when you consider the entire visible universe is 10 to the 28th inches in diameter. Big number. DNA does not prove evolution. DNA only shows how complex life is. You know, penicillin only has two chromosomes. Fruit flies have eight. I put together some critters and said, you know, I think I know how evolution really happened. Penicillin was first and it evolved to a fruit fly. And then it evolved to a tomato or a house fly. They're twins, you know, they both have 12 chromosomes. Very hard to tell the difference between those two. And then slowly over millions of years, they got some more chromosomes and became a P. And then it evolved to a B. Now here you can see the similarity. P, B, very similar. <laughs> and then very slowly it evolved to lettuce. And over millions of years, finally, triplets were born. Did you know the possum, the redwood tree, and the kidney bean all have 22 chromosomes? The average scientist cannot tell them apart. <laughs> Let's see, possum, redwood tree, kidney bean. Yeah, let me see. Tree, got it. Possum, oh, we got it, folks. There we go. And then slowly, over millions of years, we evolved to a human. Here we have 46. And if we can just get two more, we're going to be a tobacco plant. <laughs> Sometimes I'll get on the elevator and I'll say, man, you're evolving. You're way ahead of me. And of course, dogs and chickens are twins. Everybody knows that. They both have 78 chromosomes. And someday, we might get enough chromosomes to be a carp. <laughs> and it probably won't happen in my lifetime, but maybe we'll evolve far enough to someday, in star date 34, 95, 72, we can be a fern. <laughs> I was in a church one time, and this lady came to me afterwards and said, Mr. Hoven, I'm fern. <laughs> <laughs> I shook hands with that hand right there. I'll never wash it again. They tell the kids to think critically. Boys and girls, there are 20 kinds of amino acids. That's true. They make up proteins. Explain how this fact supports the idea that all life shares a common ancestor. No, that fact supports the idea that all life has a common designer. 
I bet you can go to the library and find all the books in the library contain the same 26 basic letters. Don't they? Yep, that proves everything evolved from Morse code. <laughs> no, that proves that's the, that's the code with which you write English. And the 20 amino acids is the code with which you write proteins, okay? And God did it that way, I think, so that we can eat something other than ourselves. See, the brown cow can eat the green grass and get the white milk, and I can drink and get the blonde hair. <laughs> if God didn't make it that way, we're the same 20 same amino acids, then we couldn't digest other things. Think about it. They tell the kids that the human and the chimpanzee are related. The human and the orangutan are 96% similar. That proves a common ancestor 15 million years ago. Well, this is baloney. Barney Maddox, the leading, leading genome researcher, he said, the genetic difference between human and his nearest relative, the chimpanzee, is at least 1.6%. That doesn't sound like much, but calculated out, that's a gap of 48 million nucleotides, and a change of only three nucleotides is fatal to an organ animal. There is no possibility of change. Kids, when they tell you that you have proof for evolution because the human and the chimpanzee are similar DNA, they're confused or they're lying to you. Actually, they've now discovered the difference is much greater. It's now 95% similarity instead of 98.6. We've got tons of material on this on our website. The similarity between humans and chimps is much greater than they thought. I mean, the difference between the humans and chimps is much greater than they thought. Um, similar structures nearly always have similar plans, like DNA in this case. Similar bridges nearly always have similar blueprints. This hardly constitutes evidence that one sired the other or that they were erected by tornadoes. <laughs> so what if we're similar to humans? You know, people have a pretty good understanding of how cars work. I've had 124 cars since I've been driving. Never had a new one. Always get a clunker and fix it up, you know. My daddy taught us boys how to work on cars. I rebuilt the motors, the transmissions, the wobbleator shafts, the muffler bearings, the high-speed Knuton valves. <laughs> I know how cars work pretty well. But understanding how a car works does not explain how it originated. Big difference. Just because you know the operation has nothing to do with the origination. Suppose your son turns 16, like my kids did years ago. Your son comes up one day and says, hey, Dad, I got my driver's license. Wow, son, let me see that thing. Ooh-wee, that's a lousy picture. It is a good likeness, though. He says, hey, Dad, uh, can I borrow the car? Well, son, listen, your mom and I knew this day was coming. We've been praying about this. We don't think you're ready for the whole car, son. The car is a complex machine. Did you know there are 3,000 bolts required to hold a car together and one nut can scatter it all over the highway? <laughs> the car is so complex, we decided we're going to let you slowly evolve into the car. This year, we're going to give you 10%. Next year, maybe a little more. <laughs> Question, what good is 10% of a car? That's what you put in a junkyard, isn't it? <laughs> How many things have to be right on a car to make it work? Like many, many thousands of things? How many things have to be wrong to make it stop working? Any one of thousands of things. Take a needle, stick it through two spark plug wires, trim it off, wrap up the rubber. They'll never find that one. <laughs> Pull the distributor cap, take a pencil, rub it around, put it back. That's a tough one to find. When somebody's getting married, pull out the coil wire, stick a doorbell wire in there, shove it back, take the doorbell wire through the firewall, and weave it through the fabric of the front seat. <laughs> They're getting ready to go on their honeymoon, you know, hit that, bam, ooh, wow. <laughs> Don't get me started, we can go for hours, I like working on cars. <laughs> Folks, Complex things require a designer. And yet they tell the kids that humans and chimpanzees are similar. There are thousands of differences. But even if there are some similarities, so what? If you think the percentage of similarity proves something, let me show you the research I've been doing. I've discovered that clouds are 100% water. Watermelons are 97%. Only 3% difference. That proves watermelons evolved from clouds. And I discovered jellyfish are 98% water. And so are snow cones. <laughs> that proves how they evolved. 